In recent years, manufacturers have been turning their top sports cars into high-performance, all-terrain vehicles. But Porsche may have just set a new standard. Introducing the Porsche 911 Dakar, a special edition of the iconic 911 that's built to conquer sand, gravel, mud, snow, and virtually any harsh terrain where a typical 911 would struggle. This rugged off-roader pays tribute to the Porsche 953, the 1984 Paris Dakar rally champion, and the first 911 to feature all-wheel drive. However, Porsche didn't simply slap an iconic livery on this model and call it a day. Beneath the familiar 911 design, the 911 Dakar showcases years of Porsche's engineering expertise. Every detail, from the raised ride height to the gravel mode and bucket seats, was meticulously designed to turn the legendary sports car into a machine capable of handling not just paved roads, but any road. Despite its $222,000 MSRP and around 36,231,000 yen, or approximately $260,000 in Japan as of November 2023, all 2,500 units of the 911 Dakar sold out quickly. It has already become a sought-after collector's item, with pre-owned models fetching around $370,000. At first glance, the 911 Dakar doesn't look radically different from a standard 992 model. The fixed carbon fiber rear spoiler resembles the one on the turbo, while the carbon fiber hood with vents is borrowed from the GT3. However, the more you examine the Dakar, the more its unique features stand out. It sits noticeably higher with wider wheel arches and sills, stainless steel skid plates on the front, sides, and rear, and bold red tow hooks at both ends. Optional accessories like a roof rack with fog lights or a roof tent further enhance its versatility. The standard off-road Pirelli Scorpion tires make it clear that this 911 is built for far more than city streets, contrasting sharply with the shallow tread patterns typically seen on other 911 models. To emphasize the off-road spirit of the 911 Dakar, Porsche offers a range of exclusive racing liveries, making the Dakar instantly recognizable on the road. The model I tested came in the iconic white and gentian blue Rough Roads livery, a nod to the Porsche 953 and its famous Rothmans design. This stunning livery, however, is an optional extra and comes with a hefty price tag, around $20,000. More affordable options include the Rally 1978 livery, which features the distinctive Martini Racing red and blue stripes in tribute to the 1978 East African Safari Rally. Adding to the exclusivity, the specific Dakar I drove was signed by racing legend Jackie Ix. For context, Ix is a celebrated Belgian driver who not only achieved multiple victories for Porsche at Le Mans, but also piloted the Porsche 959 during the 1986 Paris Dakar Rally. His autograph is proudly displayed on the top right corner of the bonnet. Driving impressions and performance. The 911 Dakar is based on the Carrera 4 GTS, sharing the same 473 horsepower twin turbocharged 3.0 liter flat six engine, but the similarities largely end there. Porsche has extensively retuned the Dakar suspension, giving it a ride height that's 1.9 inches higher than the Carrera 4 GTS, with an additional 1.2 inches of lift available in off-road mode. To ensure optimal performance in tough conditions, the Dakar is equipped with the more powerful cooling fans from the 911 Turbo, along with the Turbo's air filter to protect against dust and debris. Taking the Dakar off-road for the first time is a surreal experience. It feels unnatural at first, as you wouldn't typically take a high-end 911 sports car off the asphalt. But Porsche's modifications truly shine when you leave the paved road behind. With ample ground clearance, you can confidently tackle rough terrains without worrying about scraping the front bumper or damaging the tires on sharp rocks. Off-road mode splits power equally between the front and rear wheels delivering maximum traction and ensuring the Dakar performs just as capably off-road as any dedicated off-road. Rally mode is where things get truly interesting. Made for loose surfaces, the driving mode exclusive to the Dakar features a rear-biased all-wheel drive configuration, sending about 80% of the power to the rear axle. That's where the car reveals its true personality, as the Dakar sees every corner as an opportunity to go sideways. This playfulness is perhaps what makes the Dakar so likable. 
It slides around effortlessly, especially on off-road terrain. Yet the tires still give you enough grip to always make you feel in control. The Dakar truly shines on rough surfaces, where your average sports car would have you fighting to stay on your path. The Dakar does it with ease, always following where you direct it to go. Paired with the smooth suspensions, you feel aware of the road surfaces without breaking your back on bumps and holes. The Dakar doesn't drive, it glides over imperfections, giving you the feeling that you too can be a Paris Dakar rally driver. Back on the asphalt, the 911 Dakar behaves similarly to other 911 models. It's precise, sharp, and fast. You get to enjoy Porsche's brilliant and responsive 8-speed PDK transmission, Porsche's dual-speed transmission, making sudden accelerations and overtakes quick and effortless. Acceleration. Just like the Carrera 4 GTS it is based on, the 911 Dakar shares similar acceleration times, going 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 3.2 seconds, or 0.1 seconds slower than the 4 GTS. However, top speed figures are drastically different. Where the 4 GTS reaches a top speed of 192 miles per hour, the Dakar's top speed is limited to 150 miles per hour in order to not damage the off-road tires. It's also worth noting that you can drive the Dakar as fast as 106 miles per hour with the lift setting on before the car automatically goes back to position. Acceleration 0 to 60 miles per hour, 3.2 seconds. Porsche 911 Dakar Fuel Economy. As a sports car that can go have fun off-road, don't expect the Dakar to be a fuel-efficient car. As I drove on gravel, throwing the car around, suddenly accelerating and revving it up, all these fun stunts inevitably made the Dakar's fuel efficiency go all the way down to 11.3 miles per gallon, and I saw myself refueling the car every day. While I wouldn't expect any different numbers from such a fun sports car after a good off-roading session, the Dakar behaves well on the highway and in the city, and fuel efficiency follows. Similarly to official EPA ratings, the Dakar averaged somewhere in between 19 to 21 miles per gallon, making it a relatively efficient sports car on the daily. Interior design and comfort. The 911 Dakar comes with Porsche's carbon fiber bucket seats as standard to keep you in place on your off-road adventures. I've always loved Porsche's carbon bucket seats as they keep you in perfect place when accelerating, taking corners, and in the case of the Dakar, when driving fast on rough terrain. The seats keep you seated in an upright position, meaning it doesn't allow you to lean or relax while cruising or driving in the city. The seats, though far from uncomfortable, can quickly become an inconvenience for those who don't plan on taking the Dakar out of the city, making the 18-way adjustable sports seats a better option for drivers prioritizing comfort. The Dakar does not come with any rear seats to keep the car as light as possible. The roll cage is optional, and not having a roll cage can free up some space to store luggage at the back. Inside, the Dakar offers a convenient space, just like the GTS it is based on. There is plenty of space to store your phone and wallet in the center.